you want to make your animations interactive. Maybe a button that responds when hovered, or an icon that changes when clicked. But you're not a developer. So how do you add logic and conditions without writing a single line of code? That's where state machines in Lottie Creator come in. It allows you to do exactly that with a simple visual interface. Think of a state machine like the lock screen on your phone. At any moment, your phone can only be in one state. It's either locked or unlocked. The action of unlocking, like entering your passcode or using the face ID, is what moves it from locked to unlocked. Animations work the same way. They live in states and they move between them when certain conditions are met. Let's walk through how this works step by step. Segments. The building blocks. Before you bring an animation into a state machine, you'll need to break it into segments. These are little pieces of your animation. Moments like lock idle, unlock transition, and unlock idle. The animation itself should already include all the variations, states, or even themes that you want to use. Each of those variations get cut into a segment. Then, inside the state machine, those segments become states that you can connect together and control. Think of segments as a foundation that everything else depends on. While you can do simple playback without them, they're what makes states and transitions possible. You can also decide which state to start from. This is called the initial state. There's also something called a global state. Think of this as a universal state that is always listening in the background. It's a way to keep your state machine cleaner and avoid drawing dozens of connections. And finally, there's the final state. This is simply the endpoint where your animation stops once it's done. Inputs, the drivers. To move from one state to another, we need inputs. Think of this as setting your passcode on a phone. These are the values the phone checks against when deciding whether to unlock. In a state machine, inputs work the same way. There are little switches or values the system keeps track of and they can be boolean, true or false, numeric, a number that changes, string, a label, or an event, something that fires once. These inputs are what the state machine looks at before deciding if it can move from one state to another. Transitions, the guards. Now just because you type something in doesn't mean your phone unlocks. The input has to match the condition. That is, the passcode must be correct. That's the role of transitions. They're like guards standing at the door. A transition defines the rule. In this animation, it's the same. If password correct equals true, then move from unlock idle to unlock transition. Transitions are what actually connect one state to another, but only if the condition is satisfied. Interactions, the triggers. Now, how do these inputs actually get fired in the first place? That's where interactions come in. Interactions are the user-driven actions like clicking, pressing down, hovering, etc. They're what cause the inputs to change. Here's the important bit. Inputs and transitions alone are enough to drive state machines, and often, developers use code to control them directly. But as designers, if we want animations to respond to real user actions, we add interactions. They're the bridge between what the user does and what the state machine decides. So, in animation, if someone clicks over a button or an icon, that click interaction flips an input, which fires a transition, and it animates into its click state. Exporting your state machine Once your state machine is set up and working the way you want, the final step is to export it. You can do this directly through Lottie Files workspace, which packages everything neatly into the .lottie format. Think of .lottie as a secure case. It doesn't just carry the animation, but also the states, inputs, and transitions that make it interactive. So wherever you use it, whether it's in an app, a website, or any other project, it behaves exactly the same. And that's the magic of state machines. They let your animations respond, adapt, and feel alive without needing to write a single line of code. In the next videos, we'll dive deeper with step-by-step -step walkthroughs so you can see exactly how to set them up and use them in your own projects. To explore more, check out the links in description below.